Hey, my name is Kyle and I'm reviewing, well, I'm here basically just to tell you about my experience with nasal congestion. It's been something that has uh, been a major disruption in my life for 10 plus years. And the purpose of me doing this or the purpose for me to do this is so that hopefully, I, well, step one is so I could document my experience and see my progress, and two, potentially turn somebody on to something that's working because I've got a solution that is potentially a long-term solution that I'll, I'll walk you guys all through right now. So I, my, my experience with nasal congestion started 10 years ago. It was, it, it happens when I sleep and I get incredible congestion and it, 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 it makes it such that I cannot sleep and I can't fall asleep, I can't stay asleep. It puts my whole body into a stress level environment and I toss and I turn and I get frustrated and I wake up and I'm up for several hours during the night and it's really created a, a problem with my quality of life. So symptoms are unbearable, not something that you could live with long term. Uh, the initial solve was everybody's go-to, which is Afrin. So I was a chronic, I have been a, a chronic Afrin user for, you know, on spurts. I mean, the, prob the longest term was probably seven years straight every single night. Um, and so the progression started with Afrin. I did it for probably about two years and then realized that that wasn't a solve. Um, and so I went to an ENT. I thought maybe the problem was structural. And the ENT told me that I had a deviated septum. <clears throat> oh no, sorry. Actually, I'm I'm uh, I'm. The story starts. The story starts with actually a different procedure, where basically they go in and they zap your turbinates. Uh, it's an in it's an in house procedure. You go in, they zap your turbinates. Technically, what's supposed to happen is um, they're supposed to kind of recoil, if you would, which is potentially supposed to give you more airflow. I did that. It worked for two or three days and didn't do anything. So I can't even remember what that procedure was called, but that was kind of step one. Uh, the next step was having the so you know a follow up appointment, and then the ENT said, "Hey, look at you got a deviated septum." I said, "Okay, great." And by the way, you know I you know I'm not advocating for any surgery. I mean, it was kind of like a, he's a car salesman. He's like, "Hey, you got a deviated septum." It's like I'm kind of just you know the sheep going through the thing so that he could do a surgery, right? But I was desperate <clears throat> looking for a solution. So I thought, hey, look it, let's try it out. So I did the deviated septum surgery. It was not by a, I was on an HMO at the time. So I didn't have a great surgeon. It was a little podunk, a little hospital in a, in a small little town. And it was the worst experience of my life. Um, my uvula got twisted around the air, the, the breathing apparatus, you know, that they give you when you're under anesthesia. That was the first part of the problem. So I had to use this, uh, you know, lidocaine spray. Um, I could barely swallow. It was worse than any strep you've ever experienced. Uh, step two is they put these stints in your nose uh, to, to basically, cor you know, correct. It's basically, it's a stint, um, which is similar to what we're going to talk about today. Uh, but imagine the diameter of a big pen uh, and the stint is as long as the big pen. No joke, the stint is this long. Now the, the diameter of the internal component of the stint is the size of a big pen, but the outside is about this big. So when those things were in my nose, it was the most uncomfortable feeling that I could ever describe. And I don't know how long you have to wear them after the surgery, maybe it's 10 days, something like that, but it was out of control. I mean, it, it's like having the worst itch of your life and not being able to scratch it. That's what it's like 24 hours a day. It's unbelievable, right? Never recommend that surgery. It's stupid, but hey, if it gives people help, that's cool. It, it did not do anything for me. It cost me money, cost me pain, suffering, everything above and beyond, right? So from there, I got really down on uh, the ENT medical profession because I'd gone through you know, two things. They said the next thing, oh, and by the way, when they did that procedure, they also said, so they can't, you can't really um, cut turbinate tissue because you'll get what's called hollow nose syndrome. Uh, but what they can do is what they said they did to me is they, they basically go in and they carve the cartilage out below the turbinate. So as the turbinate inflames, if the pocket that it sits in is lower, technically, if it inflames, you might get less, uh, you might get more airway and you might be able to breathe better, right? So they did that as, at the same time as well. 
Um, and I did, I will say, I got about six months of relief from that. But then it came back and it came back quickly and I got really down and out with the whole ENT profession and just realized that it's nothing structural. This is not a structural problem. And I kind of went back into, I don't know what to do. And I did probably another two years of Afrin. That was my solve. I can't get up and go to work. I can't sleep. I gotta find a way. So I use Afrin every single day. Um, so from there, and it works like a charm. I mean, we all know this, right? If you have nasal problems, Afrin is your go-to thing. So then I started to realize that I can't do this every day. What am I gonna do? Um, so I, I started looking at the allergy component. Well, maybe it's allergies that are, that are causing this congestion, the underlying root of the problem, as opposed to uh, something structural with the ENT. So I went and did an allergy test and found out I'm allergic to a host of things, dust, a couple of you know types of, um, I think it was a, a, a fungus actually in the particular area I lived in Southern California at the time. And so basically what you have to do is every week you go and you get a show up. So the, the, the protocol for it is to do a desensitization shot, right? So you go in to an allergist every week and they give you a diluted component of what you're allergic to. So started with basically very, very little, and then each week they progressively increase the strength, right? They dilute it less. But the risk is that you can go into anaphylactic shock. So what they do is they make you sit there and wait for 30 to 40 minutes, right? So you go get a shot, it takes two minutes, and then you have to sit there in the office. And typically it takes people, you know, anywhere from two to, to five years to experience result, uh, results and, and really, because you're basically training your body to get used to this on a slow basis. And the science is that, hey, look at, you know, your body's gonna realize that this thing is not, it's not gonna create a, a, a response in my body. It's not gonna create the, um, um, uh, what, what do they call it? It's, uh, uh, the histamine, right? So the histamine <clears throat> is not going to be triggered because your body is no longer sensitive to whatever the substance is, right? So um, I went through this process and it's long, it's drawn out. You have to make time, you have to drive to the appointment, you have to do this huge investment in time and energy, all because I'm desperate. Now, meanwhile, I'm still using the Afrin while I'm sleeping because there's no other solve. So I did those shots, I, I went through, I changed jobs in the middle of that. So I had to go to two different um, allergist and when I went to the second one he wanted me to reset back to the baseline so I probably did this for three and a half years total um, got up to almost a full dose and I switched jobs and got back up to a full dose right so they're injecting me non-diluted the full thing zero results right so after three and a half years so now I've been using the Afrin five years and you know I'm, I've had all my hopes that this thing was gonna work it didn't do anything <clears throat> so then I went back into a, a, a just a, you know, had given up. And somewhere in, in, the, in between there, I started doing a bunch of holistic things. I think at one point in time, I was dripping mercury in my nose. Uh, I, I mean, I've tried literally everything. Oh, and so by the way, um, intermingled and sprinkled in this whole thing, I was taking- Not mercury, it's iodine. Iodine, oh, iodine, yes, Merc iodine. Mercury, iodine. <laughs> iodine, that's right, so iodine. Um, and that there was a whole host of other things, and so, um, so basically I was also using, you know, at least five to seven different types of um, steroidal nasal spray. Um, you know, when I, when this thing first started, I think, I, you know, Flonase was still not over the counter, it was prescription only, but I've used, you know, every single main brand you could think of, right? All to no avail. I mean, sometimes it would work for a couple of weeks, but then my body would just adjust to it and I would get the congestion. So, uh, so sometime probably about, to about six years or so of uh, seven years of using the Afrin straight, my wife put pressured me and said, look, you can't keep doing this for the rest of your life. You've got to stop doing the Afrin, right? So, which is true. So I, I weaned myself off that, which is a very difficult thing to do, especially after doing it for so long. And <clears throat> then the solve was basically, I was using ibuprofen. So I, I would take, you know, anywhere from, you know, three to, sorry, well, uh, I take a leave, right? So you're supposed to take two a day, a leave, 12 hours oh, a day. And you did the colloidal silver for a while. Yeah, so all that type of stuff. So eventually uh, I'm taking, you know, three to six a leave a day. I have zero pain and I would take three around five o'clock and I would take another three around 10 o'clock or 11 right before I went to bed so that I, 
you know, the inflammation in my sinuses and my head and the pressure was gone, right? And so you do, I did that for another three years, right? And so it, it's, it was unbelievable and I was desperate for a solve. And so that's why I'm here talking to you today because I found something that while it's not as good as Afrin, I'll admit that, it does create a potential for a long-term solution. So, and by the way, I looked for something like this early on and I found it later. And the reason why is because they were working through patents. It was not a, a, a company that had a patent in the United States. And at first when I started doing the research, I was a little sketched out on it. Um, and so uh, probably, you know, right now it's uh, May 24th, 2021. I've been using this product, Alexo. Uh, it's a nasal stint. I've been using it since, uh, call it the first week in April, right? So about six, seven, eight weeks, whatever it is. Maybe it was sometime in, or in March. Um, but when I first found the product, it was probably the beginning of 2020 and I was a little skeptical because there was a new patent and it just got to the point where I was so desperate that I had to try something new and I was super excited. I mean, you talk about wanting to, wanting to do anything that's me, right? So, and I know there's other people out there that are kind of in the same boat. So this potentially could be something that helps you. Um, and it has absolutely been helping me in the, in the form of um, using uh, Aleve much less, I mean, to the point where it, I eliminate it for sometimes weeks at a time. Um, and uh, I've had to use Afrin twice. We have recently moved to Utah from Southern California. So we get these winds that come off the Wasatch Front that trigger me and give me some congestion. So um, like as an example, that happened yesterday. I had to use Afrin last night, but I haven't had, oh, and by the way, I, I was, so uh, I was also using Advil cold and sinus. Uh, I started using that for probably the past year. And rather than taking so much I, uh, Aleve slash ibuprofen, same, almost the same component, I would basically, um, I would basically just take one, two, Advil cold and sinuses per night, one around five and one around 10, right? And that, that helped with the, you know, but it's a stimulant so you don't sleep as well, uh, but it did help with the congestion. So so, so, so since you have been using this, um, what medications have you stopped or decreased taking? So the main thing is that, and which, is my, which was my goal, was I'm basically off taking a leave every single day. I was taking, I was taking like I said, at one point in time, six a day. Okay, so you're, so you're done taking a leave. So, Are you still taking Advil colon sinus? No, I have not taken it. Okay. So in the past six weeks, so if you multiply, you know, let's say, let's say, you know, on average, I was probably doing four a day right before I, I started this product. So if you take, you know, six times seven, 42 days multiplied by four, that's how many a leave I've saved my body. Now I will say there's been about four nights when I had to take some Aleve because I was still having inflammation. So it's not a perfect fix like Afrin is, but I mean, to save that many pills on my body, on my liver over time, it's huge. I mean, it's a huge win for me. I mean, if there's, you know, 30 times a year that I have to take Aleve because I have sinus congestion as opposed to 365, that's a product that will I'll buy for the rest of my life. So, so can you breathe at night when you when you sleep? So I can, I can, it's, it's not as great as, uh, so I still kind of do toss and turn. I still kind of will get that thing where whatever, I'm a side sleeper too, which is problematic. Cause when you lay on your side, that, that side that's down, that's the turbinate that fills up. Um, but whatever side is up is consistently clear. And I could typically, you know, I typically wake up less. I toss and turn less. And it's, it's definitely right now, it's 100% something that I would recommend. I mean, I'm, I will keep using, this is my only solve to date. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. Now, this is the part that's interesting. And this is the part that's going to kind of freak people out, right? <clears throat> so. Do you need a mirror to put it in? I don't. So mm -hmm. the product comes with a couple of different things, but this is basically what the, what the device is, right? So this is surgical steel, it's mesh. So think about like a heart stint, right? So like if you have a heart attack, it's the same concept, right? It goes in your vein, it expands it. So this goes into your nose and it expands it and it allows for a clear passageway. 
Um, so it, this side goes into your nose. This little metal thing is in the tip of your nose right here. When I first started, it was weird. I didn't put it all the way back. I was a little sketched out. I, I was initially afraid that I would get this thing stuck in my nose. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, <laughs> but I don't, it, I don't think it will. I mean, the way that it works, I mean, you're, you, you, it, it, it kind of adapts. And the great thing about this is you're kind of retraining your tissue, no different than like working a muscle out. Like you're, the, the tissue in your nose, like it, it, I, I will say for the first hour and a half after I take these out in the morning, I am much clearer than I am as the day goes on. Um, but this is truly an ingenious design, the, the way that they did this, right? So what it is, is it comes with a couple of different tubes. So there's one tube like this um, that you put the bottom on like this, right? So the thing sits like this in here. And then there's another little tube like this, right? That you put onto here like so. And then, it, and then what happens is it gets really skinny, right? It all goes into there. Okay, see that? So that's that's how you start to uh, that's how you start to put this thing in. Now I'll actually just put them in right now. But I, I use a little bit of water, so I'm gonna get a little bit of water here to put it on. Right? Let's do that. And I use warm water, by the way, just so it kind of helps. So this is non-scripted, so you're not gonna get any editing or bullshit or any music or anything like that. But, uh, all right, so here's the thing, right? So I usually do it in the bathroom, but to, to show you guys kind of how this works, I'll do it here. So I'm just gonna moisten it up so as it goes in my nose, it's uh, got a little lubrication, I guess, if you would. I mean, you can use probably anything. So that, I mean, they recommend you do it dry, but you know, it's, uh, you know, it's a little, I think it's a little uncomfortable. So. You basically, so this is where people are gonna get sketched out, right? So for me, it, I was desperate. Um, what I found is, so you have to take the curvature and work it back with your nasal passage, but it's really, it's really nothing, right? So it just goes in like this and you just kind of slide it in. And I can't really, I'm gonna have to uh, kind of go by feel here and hopefully she's getting a good view, right? So now it should be totally in, right? So you'll see. Now what happens is I'm gonna pull this thing out. Okay, so by pulling this out, I'll show you on the next one before I do the next one. So by pulling this out, it engages the thing and it opens up, right, the stint. And then I just pull this little thing off like that, right? And you can see, see it up in there, right? So now I'm gonna push it back a little further, right? So it's in, it's like nothing. Now, when I first did this, it felt very weird. So let me show, let me show you, uh, let me demonstrate the, uh, so when it goes into your nose, right? It's gonna go into your nose like this, it goes in. And then when you pull this thing back out, it opens like that, see? And it opens right up in your nose. So now you have a breathing passageway, okay? See that? So let's do this thing. Just, I only have to feel it because I can't see it in the mirror. Boom. That was a little weird without the mirror. All right, that one's in now, see? Two little things in my nose, awesome. So, now, you go to, you just, I put them in typically around, uh, you know, it's like 8.30 right now. I'm gonna mess with this in a little bit because this is the first time I've ever done this without a mirror. It feels a little bit, mm, feels a little deep, uh, but that's good. So anyways, these are the, they comes, the stent comes in different sizes. It comes in a two inch, a three inch, and a six inch. So I was, these are the three inch version and I was still getting some congestion really deep 
in my nose. And um, I thought, well, I need to get something a little bit longer. So I recently had them get me the six inch and I tried it once and it went way down into my throat and I think it's too long. I haven't tried it since. I'm gonna try it again, but my recommendation is to go with the three, start with the three, and I'm gonna talk to these guys. I, I really think they need to have like a four and a half inch to go just a little bit past the threshold um, because people have different nasal uh, cavity sizes, right? So you can kind of play with them. Um, but back to the main thing. So I, when I ordered these, I was a little worried I mean, they're expensive. Um, I think this set was 600 bucks, right? So the worst thing you wanna do is spend 600 bucks and get zero results. And they don't have like a money back guarantee, which is something that worried me. Um, and when I called initially, um, the company, oh, by the way, the company's out of Canada, but they do have some local people here in the US. So when I initially called, I was fearful because I got routed to one of those like, you know, companies that you hire to take messages. Oh, I'll take all the information. I guess I'm gonna call you back, right? And I was, I was like, there's no way that I'm gonna spend 600 bucks. That the six inch one is like 800 bucks, I think. Um, and I, I was like, there's no way, like that's crazy. Uh, but the, the customer service group has done a top notch job of, of reaching out to me via email, via phone, um, checking up on me, seeing how I'm doing. I mean, it's, it's really kind of a grassroots growth type of thing. They're really trying to help people out. Um, and so I've been nothing but satisfied with all aspects of the product, the customer service, and um, and everything else. And I guess the final piece is when you, when you pull it out, you just pull it out by that little silver thing in the morning. I will say, you know, beware. When my, when my nose was first getting used to this, now I, I was having... I, and I might be more susceptible to this because of all the years of Afrin and just beating my nose up with all the various uh, steroid sprays. But I, I, I typically would get nosebleeds or have you know bloody boogers in the morning or whatever. Um, when I first started this, my nose would gush blood every morning. I would have to put a, put a, a piece of toilet paper up in there, and um, so you know don't get turned off by it because it's just like it's just like building a callus on your hand, right? And so for how many weeks did you? suffer the bloody noses every morning? I would say that was probably about four weeks before it, com it okay. I mean, it doesn't complete. And was it extremely uncomfortable during those four weeks? No, it's it's just, I mean, I would literally take one out and I would have a piece of toilet paper right here ready. I would stuff it up in there. I'd wrink, clink, crinkle it, put it up there, stop the blood, pull the other one out, stop the blood. In the beginning, I would wait. I got the process, I got used to the process, especially when I'm getting ready for work. So I put one in, put one in, um, clean these. There's a whole cleaning process, which I'll do on a different video, but um, then I would pull the first one out, redo another one, pull the second one out, redo another one, and within you know four minutes, the blood would have stopped. So it's not a big deal, um, but that was a quote unquote side effect that I've had. So, Only negative so, thing. So I guess how long did it take far? you to get used to or um, complete that first transition of like being used to putting those uh, stents in? Putting them in was never a problem. But again, I was Or just, just getting comfortable with them. Um, how long did, did that take? I mean, they're, they're, when they're in, you really don't feel, I mean, you feel them. So you don't feel them at all when you sleep? No, you, after about an hour, like I could feel them right now a little bit. I could feel them right now a little bit, but after about an hour, you don't notice it at all. And the funny thing is, is like, I'll be going throughout the day and it's kind of weird. Like if you itch your nose, you can feel that they're in there. Like in the morning, I'll take a shower with them still in. And you know, like if I'm washing my nose, I could feel them in there. Um, but uh, like what'll happen, what's been happening as of late is I'll be going through the day and my body's already kind of used to it. And it feels like they're in there. Like I'll like go to wipe mm -hmm. my nose and it feels, I, I like be careful because I'm like, oh, something's there and then it's actually not. So my so, body's just learning that it's there. It's just kind of a thing, so. So you wouldn't feel that there was a learning <clears throat> curve or a transition period to getting used to having the stents in your nose? For me, there was there was really none. I mean, maybe you, you would probably call that bleeding period, something where my nose was getting used to a foreign object. Um, and what I've realized, and I was actually playing with it a little bit last night, is like sometimes 
I'll mess with how deep or how shallow they are um, in the middle of the night. And that kind of helps it so that, um, you, you, you know, you get a little bit less bleeding. Because what, what, what was happening was my nose was trying to swell. The turbinates were trying to swell on this thing and they actually do. And, and so the tissue just sits there. And then when you rip it out in the morning, it's like dry. It was really dry and we moved to a, and it could have been a function of us moving. I mean, we've only lived in Utah for um, two and a half months now and we moved, this is a much drier climate than Southern California. So- But it doesn't might, it come with um, it, the lubricant or? Um, well, it comes with a cleaning spray, but it's not really a lubricant. So, okay. um, I mean, you can put some stuff in your nose if you're having a problem with that, but I mean, that's, that's not a big deal. Um, it wasn't a big deal for me. And so in, in closing, right, I, I've been doing it for almost three months and I'm a firm believer. I'm going to continue using it. Um, I'm going to let you guys know what happens with the six inch. I might keep trying that a little bit, but I'm kind of on the fence. It, it goes really deep in your throat. It's like too much. I think I, you want, I want something that's like four and a half inches to be honest. Okay. So on a scale of one to five, um, your, right, your quality of life, one being obviously the worst, and five being the best, um, what would you say so far it's been since you started using the stents? So it's it's a great question, but the um, the reality is this, right? If you use Afrin, it's an immediate solve, but that's not a long-term solution. So Afrin is like, hey, if I use this, what's my result? It's a perfect five, mm -hmm. right? Okay. I'm gonna say, but long-term, what does that do, right? Um, I'm gonna say this is as good as taking my Sudafed cold and sinus, um, where um, eh, it's probably eh, it's probably a tie. So I'll call it like a four on a one to five scale, right? It's like a four because, um, well, it's a four in terms of immediate results. It might be a three point seven five in terms of immediate result compared to a four, but this thing is not damaging any of my internal organs. Yeah. So just by that very means, it's gonna, you know, as a long-term solution, it's a five. Okay, and then, a question. so what do you um, define as immediate results? I mean, are you sleeping more? Are you breathing more? Do you feel like you're having a deeper sleep? Do you feel like you're having less sleep apnea? Well, I never had sleep apnea. I mean, so I would say, I would say that I'm able define to- Define your quality of life. When it comes to like, I guess the sleep. My sleep is still not great. Okay. But I'm able to sleep and function without all these other things. Okay. So that's a win, right? Um, I don't know why I'm still not sleep. I, I, I'm still getting some congestion. I don't know if it's not long enough. I don't know if it needs to be thicker. Maybe the steel needs to be a little less pliable so that if the turbinate does try to, to um, and I'm just, throwing out suggestions for the company, but it, it, I'm still not sleeping with 100% clear breathing passage, like if I was to use an Afrin. Okay, so, do you think if you had less mucus and, and injunction with the stents that you would have a 100%, like then you would hit a five? I mean, I if I had less mucus, I mean, you know, that, I mean, that's one of the big things, right? Is that post nasal drip that you get, so. Mm -hmm. Um, anyways, that's my review. It's a great product. Again, it's a uh, Alexo. This is Alexo light. This is the, uh, the three inch stint. And, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'm going to keep this documentation going. I'll probably do one a quarter or something for at least a year. Um, like I said, I, you know, I did the allergy thing for three and a half. So, um, I'm, I'm going to be on this path. I'm going to let you know how it goes. And, Things might change over time. You know, it's only been a couple of months. My body might start getting used to this. I might start wearing them 24 hours a day for like a month straight just to see what that does. Um, you know, if that happens, maybe, you know, it just never starts to swell. My body just gets used to it being open. So I'm playing with it and I'll let you guys know how it goes.